bite on his uh, jaw. That's if we think in terms of value as a 1 to 10 scale with 1 or 0 being black and 10 being white. If the value of his head is a 9 or an 8 or a 7.5, then this would be a 7 and this might be a 6.5. So there's a very subtle fall off there. darkest darks happen to be, make sure you put them in because those are going to have a great influence on the, uh, on the values of your uh, lights. This is a nice technique because, you know, you can also use it uh, in life drawing. I know Gregory uses it all the time from the live model. Um, get some real beautiful effects. The figure up there um, above the bookcase, second from the end. It's an example of prisma and terpenoid from life. Maybe that's a good way for you to practice before you get a job with this. taking the Tuscan red and running it over to Xeroxine next to the Carmen red. form turns from light into shadow, I come in with the Tuscan red. And then here, these planes around the mouth, the mustache, or what would be a mustache if you didn't shave, we have to deal with as being slightly grayer. I said there's going to be a value fall off on the lower head too, so just glazing some pencil over the jaw. Softening the edges of bangs. Let's just pull out a couple more light planes. Now the point of this is not, again, to show how intricate and tricky and all of that we can be, but how simple and effective we can be. Just like this one, I can carry it farther, but pretty soon it's going to reach a point where any 
art director at this stage in the drawing, if he has a problem with the artwork at all, it's not going to be because he doesn't think the heads are rendered enough. You may think that, I may think that, but that's not what he's going to be looking for. <coughs> now, for finish art, this may or may not be, you know, enough. But for the purposes of color comps at this stage, it's getting very close to where it wants to be, or, you know, most to be. Let's just take a little bit of paint now and show you how you can pop a couple of things on these heads. For that, you know, you can actually paint with color on this. I think at this point, just to keep it simple, just talk about putting in whites and possibly a couple of darks, although the darks are probably not necessary. So, yeah, just a little slip of paper or something, I can just lay some white, titanium white on, just a tear sheet or a slip sheet from somebody. It doesn't have to be anything. That's good. If you need to go wider than this, you need to focus that just a bit, maybe, if you can. And you can zoom in a little more if it's possible, as close as you can get us on this head. Focus. Okay. Now, if you need to go wider than this, it's actually possible if you get Badger pre-reduced airbrush white whiter than titanium white acrylic. and crest lights must be kept relatively small or the thing's going to start looking very chalky. Teeth, I'm pushing it about as far as I can before they start to look too, too rendered up and too unteeth like The teeth should be generally pretty simple.
turning of a plane, that's usually where you're going to get a piece of counterpoint or a press light or an accent. And so it's those places that I'm selecting. And even here, if I were doing a full portrait or a, a rendering or something like that, I might not pick and choose these in quite the same way. Because here I'm trying to get the effect so that at a distance, in a moment, at a glance, a client will say, well, yeah, that's it. You know? I don't really want to do this in the way that uh, someone like Franz Halls would do it or something. 